the Challenge Cup here on the Mid-States Hockey Club YouTube page. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner today in Sean Malone. Sean, we just witnessed a great game between the Priory Ravens and the Lafayette Lancers in the Wickenheiser Cup. But now this is the granddaddy of them all here in the St. Louis area. It is the SLU Junior Billikens taking on the DeSmet Spartans for the Challenge Cup. It should be a great evening here at the Centene Community Ice Center. SLU, they are no stranger to this Challenge Cup. 2019 and 2018, they won the, the entire thing, Sean. Yeah, they've won two out of the last three years. But you look at DeSmet. And they've already played upset so far. They knocked off number one is CBC in the semifinals. CBC won the three prior to SLU High School. Well, and we know that CBC has won a ton of these Challenge Cups. DeSmet has as well as, you know, if you go back and look at uh, the prior years going all the way back in time. But we'll stick with the past uh, five to seven years. These, all, all three of these teams have been dominant. Yeah, they're names that the hockey community in St. Louis, they're familiar with. Each of them have had their turn on top. Most recently out of these two teams that are left, it was the SLU Junior Billikens, but now Desmet looking to knock them off. Desmet made it here by beating CBC. Uh, I mentioned before, they lost to them two to four, then beat them three to one, won that overtime period, one to nothing. And also in the round before that beat uh, number five Kirkwood, 4-0, 4-0 in both of their games. Meanwhile, for the SLU Junior Billikens, they got wins over Francis Howell, 7-1, and then 8-2 in the second game. And they beat Vianney in straight games as well, 5-3 and 3-2. Uh, Weiger's big in that one. He had two points as well as Vogel had a goal. Uh, but Lansky had a goal in that one too. So let's look and see how these two teams shaped up in the regular season. If you want to look at the rankings, in terms of points, Lafayette at the top um, in terms of points. We'll just say SLU and DeSmet are the ones that you want to keep an eye out for, of course, because they are the two teams that are playing in tonight's game. So these two teams are neck and neck. And I talked with Coach Walters beforehand, which hopefully we'll have that video up for all of you to see. But this team, like I said, they're no stranger to this big game, but they're no stranger to the DeSmet Spartans. These two teams have played each other multiple times over the course of many years. They know exactly what to expect coming into this game. No, there's familiarity with each other, certainly, and that's what's going to make this fun is the players know each other and how they like to play, and DeSmet has been on the wrong end of that history of late. As their coach told me when I had a chance to coach Chris Durso a little bit before, his team has struggled to find the back of the net of SLU. And it's not just this year. It's gone back the last couple of years, he said. So it'll be really interesting. We talked last game about starting hot for both sides. I think offensively, if this met, maybe not say find a goal early, but if you can get a number of shots on net early, I think that'll make them feel a little more comfortable than if you're already facing a team that you have trouble scoring against. If you're having trouble getting shots against them, I wonder if that starts to get in your head a little bit. Yeah, and on the on the the goaltending side for the junior Billikens, you have Maxim Belli who will be in net the six foot 150 pound. I'm trying to think back. I haven't been in high school in some time. Junior. <laughs> Junior. Oh my goodness, Sean. <laughs> Holy moly. I think it's been longer for it's me. Been, it's been a, it really hasn't been that long. I just I just I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. But let's look at these two teams. We kind of just mentioned uh, you know how they shape up against one another. Let's get the let's look at the records during the regular season. You look at the SMET, 12, 5, and 3, going up against the Junior Billikins, 16, 2, and 2. In terms of goals per game. Yes, like you said, DeSmet not finding the back of the net compared to the Junior Billikens. Of course, there is a discrepancy there. But goals against, I mean, two and one, yeah, that is kind of a, a discrepancy. But, you know, it's not as big of a discrepancy as the, the goals that they're scoring. Well, you look at the net goal difference for each side, like uh, DeSmet is only averaging about a goal and a half more per game than their opposition. Meanwhile, on the other side, you look at the Slew Billikens, you're winning every game pretty much 5-2. to two. 
you're, you're beating teams pretty handily at the end of the game. My <laughs> you bad. are. I mean, you look at Desmet is winning by slim margins with those averages. On the other side, SLU is winning games pretty handily. That's a big difference. But you look at the power play percentage and the penalty kill percentage. Let's see if special teams plays a big factor in this game because this men is finding the back of the net more frequently than the junior billikens are throughout the season and they're preventing teams from finding the back of the net this could be one of those you know because you look at the records and they're similar and yeah the goals per game may be what they are but it could be a case of this met does the little things right slew makes the bigger plays who's going to come out on top when both those uh, styles meet i mean that's an insane penalty kill percentage sean so Special teams will be a factor tonight. The junior Billikens, they're going to have to stay out of the penalty box, and they're going to have to capitalize on their opportunities on the power play. We talked about the road to this Challenge Cup. Some of these guys, you mentioned Uyghurs. He had a goal against Vianney. You mentioned for Smet, Ruder, three goals, three points. This guy, he can find the back of the net. We saw in the Wickenheiser Cup, I hate to, to allude back to the previous game, but we saw two guys, one guy on each team, step up and be that benefactor for their team. It was a very close game, but they stood out. Those two guys were the difference in that game. Who is going to be the guy in this game for each team? We'll find that out here coming soon. Both teams have not made their way onto the ice. Of course, we have introductions to get into. This crowd is getting loud and it's getting packed. The Smet on the far end of the ice, the Junior Billiken faithful closest to us. And now the DeSmet Spartans have made their way out onto the ice as they don that maroon with the gold helmets, the gold buckets, that off-white. I love that color, Sean. It reminds me of a, an old winter classic jersey. Uh, this is some just some some classic hockey sweaters. The whole look of the uniform, I think it's just glorious right there. I like the double, as you mentioned, that color, that off-white cream color almost that they've got. I like the double stripe at the elbow, at about the calf of the socks, and at the bottom of the uniform Woo. too. These are some really nice old school looking uniforms with the uh, what is it, calligraphy letter D for this Mets on the shoulders of the uniform as well. But here comes Slu sporting some clean white uniforms. They've got the blue lettering and numbers on the uniform with a sky blue trim around them as well. More of a modern look as opposed to the more uh, traditional look for Dismet, but that's certainly a clean uniform they've got over there themselves. Absolutely. You know, as much as we love talking about the game, we love diving into the, uh, the aesthetics of this game. All the fans are in attendance. Both these teams will warm up, get some warm-ups going. We will be right back, so don't go anywhere. You are watching the Challenge Cup right here on the Mid-States Hockey Club YouTube Hockey page.
brucia tutto, non vedo il fondo, non lo reggo un altro secondo. Gambe a pezzi e manca tanto, basta mollo, non me la sento. Non ho fiato e sono lento, non giocherò mai, zero talento. Pedalate pesanti, non ho più spinta, ma quale cima, non basta la grinta. Non prendo una palla, sono sfinita, male oggi, penso in partita. CCM One Piece Boot. The CCM One Piece Boot. If I had these in my day, I could have been Connor McDavid. I could have been Connor McDavid. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Helps make your feet faster, gives you a closer fit. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Looking sharp, bud. Good thing you got that One Piece Boot, you duster. Hi, I'm Keegan with How I Hockey Tape, and today we're going to be talking about using a skate stone. Skate stones are a pre-game or an in-game tool to help sharpen dull or nicked blades that have lost their edge. When you're using a skate stone, it's extremely important to remember never to touch the bottom of the blade. It's only to be used on the sides of the blade. So what you're going to do, take your skate stone, and you're just going to make a couple passes along the side of the blade, not using too much pressure or too little pressure, just making a couple passes on both sides. Using the skate stone is just a temporary fix. It's not a good substitute for getting your skate sharpened. Make sure to get your skates to your trusted skate shop for the perfect cut. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end to end video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics, ads, color commentary, on, uh, and play by play. Left wing feed At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reel 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from VidSwap, Pixelot's video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe Join the AI revolution in sports. This is the MSHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, to the Mid-States Club Hockey YouTube. It is the Challenge Cup. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner tonight in Sean Malone. It's the DeSmet Spartans taking on the SLU Junior Billikens here at the Centene Community Ice Center. Both teams will be introduced before we have Puck Drop and, of course, the National Anthem. This is a packed barn here in Maryland Heights. 
This game formerly being played at the Enterprise Center, but tonight it is at the Blues practice facility, the Centene Community Ice Center. Everyone is excited here as we look to be introduced to both teams. Sean, looking at this game and both of these teams, lots of seniors coming from the Junior Billikens, a ton of seniors. And talking with Coach Walters, he told me those guys are going to have to prove, or not prove, but they're going to exhibit a ton of leadership tonight, and that leadership will ultimately help this core of players get over the hump tonight and, and hopefully, for their sake, win this Challenge Cup. Yeah, leadership is going to be big in this game, not just for the SLU Junior Bellicans, but this met as well. When I talked with their head coach, uh, Chris Durso, before, he told, I asked him, first off, you know, how it felt, what were the emotions like after knocking off CBC, the number one team in the greater St. Louis area, and, and he was talking about how excited they were. But then, of course, like their team had to, we turned it to the upcoming game against the SLU Junior Bellicans. I asked him, like, how do you turn that emotion of elation and the high from that victory into this game? And he talked about his players, how it's going to come down to them and a couple of the leaders on their team, uh, Vito Biondo, one of them, um, you know, a couple others like uh, Nick Salthaus, uh, one of the alternate captains for the team, Tyler Lofman, uh, captain as well. It's going to come down to players like that who, you know, yeah, it's nice. You guys knocked off CBC. What are you going to do from there? That's not the end of the season. You've got another game coming up next against an incredibly talented team like the SLU Junior Billikens. Got to turn to your leaders to get your attention turned on that game. But SLU, as you mentioned, they've got leaders themselves, seniors up and down the board. I mean, you look at their starters will be introduced here in just a second. They got a trio of seniors amongst their starters uh, that are going to be playing in tonight's game as well. So clearly leadership and emphasis for the SLU Junior Billikens squad. Yeah, and you look at their goaltending too, Maxim Belly, the, the junior, he comes in an 8-2-1 record, a 1.03 goals against average, and a 9.45 save percentage. No wonder it's been so tough for DeSmet trying to put the puck in the back of the net against these guys because their goaltending has been so terrific. Andrew Belly, he's 3-0-0. He posted uh, 0 0.60 goals against average and 9.58 save percentage. So these two guys, of course, Maxim getting the start tonight for the Billikens, the junior Billikens. Uh, it's going to be a tough test for DeSmet for sure. But, you know, when you look between the pipes for them, they also have a guy that can get the job done. No, uh, DeSmet, they've got Brady Govro, and he's having a good season himself. He's averaging 1.6 goals against average. Facing 90 or saving 92% of the shots that he's faced. He's 9 5 and 2 on the season. He's having a heck of a season himself. And it's always fun when you get these late season matchups in hockey at any level when it usually finds out or finds its way to being two of the best goaltenders in that respective area, that respective conference, division, league, whatever it may be. It's always fun when you've got two just absolute walls matching up against each other. It should be a fun one. We'll let the introductions speak for themselves. You let the, the crowd roar before we take a quick timeout. And puck drop will be coming up shortly.
right, that is the introductions, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Puck drop for the Challenge Cup is coming up next. You're watching the Challenge Cup right here on the Mid-States Club Hockey YouTube page. For over 50 years, shared men for and with others to transform the world. If these walls could talk, they would share countless stories. Friendships formed, laughter shared, dreams imagined. Our legacy is a promise to enable the success of those who follow in our footsteps. It is on the shoulders of many legendary leaders that we stand today to make this happen. We are the guardians of a tradition of excellence. What we give today shapes tomorrow. And so we accept the challenge. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for reward. Save that of knowing that I do your will. So much more than just a high school. We are your home for four years. We are Spartans for life. We are Desmet. Every day we come from miles apart. We come from one bedroom apartments and two story homes. We drive, bike, and take the bus from more than 90 zip codes on both sides of the river. Our parents are executives, plumbers, university professors, and cab drivers. We represent diverse cultures, perspectives, and backgrounds. We are scholars, artists, athletes, and campus ministers. We represent St. Louis. We are many unique parts, yet one unified body. We share a drive to become prolific learners and critical thinkers of high moral caliber. We are brothers united in Christ, committed to justice and service. We promote solidarity and serve the common good. We are blessed with a 200 year tradition of excellence, inspired by St. Ignatius of Loyola. We are grateful for our past, but we are not looking back. Now is our time to take our school's torch and to light the future. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Challenge Cup here on the Mid-States Club Hockey YouTube page. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Sean Malone. It is the SLU Junior Billikens taking on the DeSmet Spartans here at the Centene Community Ice Center. It's been a terrific season of high school hockey here in the state of Missouri and in the city of St. Louis. But Sean, it comes down to this final game. Someone's coming home with the hardware as we are underway. As the Billikens take possession in their own zone, they go D to D far side. Dumping it in. Out of his cage is Guevara. He'll leave it. He'll send it around to the near side. Picked up as the Smet exits the zone into the neutral zone. Two on one opportunity for the Spartans, but it goes by the wayside as we have a whistle blown off sides with 14.40 left to go here in the first period. We have our first whistle of the game. 
I'm really curious to see which side is going to come out. Playing better in the beginning. We saw that was the big difference in last game. The goal 30 seconds in pri by priority was one of the difference makers in the game. They won by a single goal. Billikens get it in deep, in on the four check. The Spartans skating out with it, making a nifty move. As they enter into the zone, backhanded opportunity. That one goes off a of body into the corner, near side at the half wall. Slew comes out with it, that one turned over. Far side corner, sent around to the near side. With it, able to get it out, racing back for it. Is George Lyons for the Spartans. Lyons on his backhand, he'll pick the puck up below the goal line and reverse it. Skating up ice. Shot on, that one stopped. And we have a whistle with 13.50 remaining here in the first period. Our first shot of tonight's game. Nice save there by Belly. I really think this game is going to come down to goaltending. I've got a feeling it's going to be a good goaltending battle between either side, but which one is not going to let that easy one trickle through and which goaltender's defense is not going to leave him out to dry either. Going 200 feet, Gundy, Luke Gundy, forehand, far side, that one off his skate, sent around to the far side corner. Skating after it is Dobish. Gundy on his forehand, slaps it back into the DeSmet zone, able to pick things up for the Spartans, is Schneiderman. That one off the stick and into the zone. Billikens, got Peterson overskates the puck, but he has support. Into the neutral zone. Taking a whack is Dobish. Sent in behind the cage. Rimmed around to the far side. Slap shot on. That one off the stick. Hits off the ice. Two hour left. That's where it is right now through the early part of this game so far. Just about four minutes into our broadcast. So off the skate. The smack going the other way. That one to the far side. Racing after it is Dobish. Sends it to the near side. Lockman with it up top to the blue line. Schneiderman, wrist one on, that one off the stick. Shot, that one. Credit to the defense there. They didn't allow Dismet to get a clean look on net at all, despite having some good opportunities. Brogan with it. As he's bumped right inside the zone by Schneiderman. Slew still with it. High slot. Can't get the shot off as that was Brunt going the other way. With speed, Conti with it to his backhand. Tries to go forehand as that one's taken away. Slew able to send it forward. And that one out of play with 10.03 remaining here in the first period. Looking for that stretch pass. And I don't even know where the puck went, Sean. Yeah, it was one of those you're trying to follow the black puck. And it was high enough and going, you know, parallel from our view with the stand. You kind of lose it a little bit amongst the crowd. And then it glanced off the... Uh, Curved corner they've got there right at the end of the bench, right next to Charles Grice, the backup goaltender for the Dismet Spartans. Pat Lansky able to get the puck out of the zone on his backhand, firing it to the other side was Reuter. Big hit inside the neutral zone as Conti spins away, feeds it, that one to the slot. It's batted down. Slew able to come out with it. Skating far side, Petlansky opens up, looking, fires, nice block. What a block by Biondo as he's able to get the puck out of the zone. Biondo eliminated a great opportunity, Petlansky, great vision to find him open and feed him. He had a good look on net, but that was erased right there. Into the neutral zone, sent back into the Desmet zone. However, we have a whistle blown with 9.17 remaining here in the first period. Offsides is the call. And again, Slough High School still searching for their first shot on goal of the game. And you're always talking hot. This is Pet Lansky. He flips it into the neutral zone. It's gloved down by Biondo. He steps up. Biondo does forehand as he's taken down. Falls into the corner. He's tied up with Luke Gundy. Gundy comes out with a puck behind his own net. He'll wrist one off the glass. That one skips past his teammate. Picked up by Fultz. Folks, he'll leave it. Folks, able to get it to Sindelar. Behind the net to the far side corner. Petlansky on his backhand. It's going to be a foot race. 
Skating after it, Lions wrist one. Oh, that one right off the post. Slew almost made it a one nothing game. I, I don't know. I didn't hear the post. I don't know about you. I don't think anyone else heard the post. The everyone on, heard enough of it. Everyone on this side of the ice thinks it should be a one nothing game. You're calling it no goal. I have no other reason to believe it uh, went official, off the post. but The official has the better view than us, but I, that's usually one of those, if it rings out like that, it rings out off the post. So Biondo with it on his forehand, the captain, sauce pass, looking for his man up the middle. As that was Sindelar, we have an icing with 6'11". So the score remains 0-0, but probably one of the better chances for either of these teams here in this first period of the Challenge Cup between the SLU Junior Villikins and the DeSmet Spartans. But their one and only shot on goal, and Coach Steve Walters, he's not arguing it. I would have thought this would be the chance that, hey, that one didn't go in. I, that would have been his chance to question it if there was any question about it, but if he's not going to argue it, I don't think anybody else should. Folk sends it to the near side. Dunwald with it, pokes it forward, intercepted. Sent forward by the Junior Billikins. It's flipped into the zone. Back for it now is Folks. Folks behind the net. He'll stop and start with it to the near side. Dunwald looks up at his own blue line, cross ice pass, hits off a stick. Biondo with it. He's tied up against the boards, able to shovel it around to the other side as Vogley skating up with it. DiMaggio. DiMaggio to his backhand, tries to play it forward. He's taken down, no call. Comes up top to the blue line, wrist shot on that one. Steered wide into the corner. DeSmet unable to get it out. Kept in by the Junior Billikins. Wrist shot on, they score! <laughs> Daniel Sindobri makes it a one nothing game for the Junior Billikins. Well, he got his opportunity. Brady Kovro had him squared up, went five hole on him, and was able to squeeze it through to find the back of the net. No doubt about that. And we have our first goal of the game. And it came off of a turnover right inside the DeSmet zone, kept in. And Sindobri did the rest. Makes it a one nothing game on the third shot of this game coming from the Junior Billikins. And that's got to be frustrating if you're this mad. I mean, you've been dominating throughout this first period so far. You've had almost all the offensive opportunities. SLU gets three shots on net, and they get one to go through. So that puck goes past Luke Gundy. He'll send it around to the near side boards. It comes up to the blue line for Schneiderman. Schneiderman able to keep it in. However, it's sent out. Junior Billikins have numbers. Serafin on it, helping him out. Is this Line, Liney and Winkleman? Comes up top to the blue line. Gundy elects not to step up. It's taken out of the zone by DeSmet. Sent in by Anthony Conti. Gundy with it. Off the board, Snyderman D to D to his partner Dobish. Dobish to his forehand. He'll slow things down in his own zone. We approach the four, minute, four and a half minute mark here of the first period. That pass off his stick. Skating with it now, Sindelar. Drop back. Far side half all. That one's sent to the slot. No one there for DeSmet. It's going the other way for the Junior Billikins. Far side. Trying to make a move is Winkleman. That one comes to the near side corner. DeSmet stood up at their own blue line. However, the puck does come out of the zone. Sent back in. Coming out of his cage is Govero. Reverse behind the net. DeSmet had all of the momentum here in this first period, and that was all wiped out by that first goal coming from Zindobri. And now they're having trouble getting some offense going. They're trying to fit that home run pass through, but similar to the last game, which was a theme, it's not connecting cleanly, and now they actually do have an opportunity. They're finally able to skate it into the zone. Folks with it, far side, sends it back below the goal line. Picked up by Dunwald, back to the other side. Near side, still below the dots. Battle for it behind the net. That one's sent around the boards. It's knocked down at the half wall. It's kept in by DeSmet. 
working for the puck. Comes up top to the blue line, slapper on that one off his shin pad. Comes out of the zone, able to pick it up as Biondo. He'll spin away at his own blue line, just inside of his own zone. He'll bring it back. Forehand pass to the far side, looking for his partner in Folks. Stays in the zone, Folks with it again. He'll feed it back over to the near side for Biondo. Biondo back to Folks. They'll play pitch and catch behind the net. Biondo, that pass goes off a stick. It's picked up by Salthouse. Salthouse trying to play it forward. He stood up at the blue line. Puck almost came out of the zone. It finally does. Able to corral the puck for the Spartans. Is Reuter, far side. Junior Billikens coming out with it at the red line, trying for that cross corner dump in was Nicholas Lyons. However, the Junior Billikens will attempt it once again, and this time they get the cross corner dump in. Comes up top to the blue line. Stepping up, DiMaggio unable to corral the puck. It's sent out of the zone at the red line, near side, dumped in by the Junior Billikens. Picked up by Schneiderman. Schneiderman on his forehand, far side, looks up, goes high and hard off the glass. It skips off a body. Able to smack it away is Gundy. Just inside the blue line, it squeaks out. Skating up with it now for the Junior Billikens is Sindobri trying to make a move. He can't get around his man, and Schneiderman and DeSmet going the other way. Here they come. Sindelar in, that one. Goes out of play with 140 remaining here in the first period. DeSmet leads in the shot totals, nine to three, but SLU has the all important lead here in the first as they stick that one away but i feel like that's the first time he's faced a shot in quite some time so an offensive zone face off coming for the Despet spartans they win it comes up top to the blue line near side ozdek shot on looking for that rebound was tyson davenport he was right there on the doorstep but that puck knocked away as it's is inside the Despet zone what a hit Puck comes out of the zone. Forward to Smet. Lockman with it. He's hounded. Near side between the hash marks and the goal line. A battle for the puck. Who's going to come out with it? It squeaks loose. High slot. Shot blocked. That's by Gundy. Lockman with it. Spins away on his forehand. He's taken down. The Smet looking for a call. That was Winkleman who... Got his stick tied up. Lockman with it again. Entering in, shot on that one. Doesn't get through, and a penalty is coming. Arm is up in the air. Gonna the Junior on. Billikens are going to have a power play. They have numbers, three on two. Slew in, shot blocked. Far side, half wall. DeSmet picks it up with 32.9 ticks remaining here in the first frame. Slew with the lead. They get the first power play of tonight's tilt. That's going to drag into the second period as well for about a minute and a half. It's goaltender interference as they've got Tyson Davenport in the box. And that's tough because you're losing one of your defensemen as well with him in the box. Or excuse me, one of your wingers rather. So a huge first power play opportunity for the junior Billikens. We talked in our pregame show about how good this DeSmet pow or, uh, penalty kill has been all season, so we'll see how these two teams match up on the special teams. They're killing about 90% of penalties that they've faced so far. Maggio with it. We've seen him go coast to coast a few times. He's doing it again at the red line. Enters into the zone. DiMaggio to his backhand. That one smacked away, and that'll pretty much do it for this first period as there's five seconds remaining on the clock. Time ticks down, and that will do it for the first. An entertaining first, to say the least. DeSmet had all the momentum early on. However, Daniel Sindobri, the sophomore, made it a 1-0 game, and, and that is where we sit heading to the second period. The Junior Billikens will have a minute and 28 seconds on the power play when we return. Don't go anywhere. It's a 1-0 game here in the Challenge Cup. You're watching the Challenge Cup on the Mid-States Club Hockey YouTube page. Learning in person or online, what works best? We let you decide. It's your education, your choice, giving you what you really want. 
the power of options to create a personalized university experience as unique as you are. Go to class, participate in campus activities, take advantage of student support services, face-to-face -face or through a screen. We've merged the best of both worlds to give you a university experience that fits your life. Finally, the choice is yours. College has changed for good. Maryville UX, the future of higher learning. And welcome back. It's the Challenge Cup between the SLU Junior Billikens and the DeSmet Spartans. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner tonight, Sean Malone. We get set for period number two between these two teams, the final game of this high school hockey season, all set here at the Centene Community Ice Center. The Junior Billikens will have a power play for roughly uh, 90 seconds, give or take, a minute 28 on the clock. One thing to note, they don't clean the ice between the first and the second period in high school hockey up here in St. Louis. So it's not like they're playing with a clean sheet of ice right now. And also only one minute between the first and second period. It's not like those legs are particularly fresh, but a little fresher than usual. You still don't like entering a period on the penalty kill. We'll see if this Mets uh, tough PK unit can be, uh, survive this test. Shot on, that one stopped. A nice stop by the netminder and Brady Govero. And we've noticed Mario DiMaggio, this, this guy, I mean, he is skating end to end, just cruising through both or all three zones. And he is creating offense. He's activating when he needs to for this Junior Billikens squad. As the Billikens, the Junior Billikens skate from right to left as they are on the power play for just over one more minute. The Smet enters into the zone. Dunwald in shot, whistle blown. That was way offside. And His teammates, I think it was Ostick, was about two strides in. No, excuse me, it was Thomas Rudder, who was about two strides into the zone already when Dunwald finally entered himself. So neutral zone faceoff. Less than a minute to go on the power play for the Junior Billikens as Tyson Davenport sits in the sin bin. That one flipped in. Going back forward to Schneiderman. Schneiderman rims one around to the near side. That one might have glanced off of the linesman or the referee, and that one sent out of the zone. Hounding the puck, and I mean hounding the puck, is Tommy Reuter. He picks it up, throws one out front, and that one knocked away. This is a great penalty kill four check right here by Desmet. Now they'll have to back off the dogs a little bit as it's turned over. Skating up ice with it, Benjamin Winkleman. Winkleman in. Winkleman flips it forward off the skate. Picked up by Schneiderman. He whiffs on the clearing attempt. Junior Billiken still with it. Shot on that one. Off a of shin pad coming out. Skating with it. Up ice is Tyler Lockman to his forehand, still with it. Lockman looking out front, that one blocked away. Still with it, high slot, shot on right into the glove of Belly. And with 13-28, we have ourselves five on five hockey once again. Lockman versus Belly right there. Lockman the captain for the Desmet Jesuits. He's got 33 points on the season. That's tied for the team high with the alternate captain, Salthouse. But man, what a year that uh, Belly's been having so far for the Slough Junior Billikens. And he does a nice job gobbling up all those shots on goal. So now DeSmet has an offensive zone opportunity after killing that penalty. They get it up top to the blue line. Wrist shot on, that one off the stick of Lions. Still with it, DeSmet has possession. Feeding one over, Folks, wrist shot on, that one off the blocker, rebound, oh, another big stop by Belly. Huge blocker save by the SLU netminder. Back in their own zone to Smet. Plays it forward, skips over a stick. Gundy able to throw it to the red line, however it's picked up by Biondo. Biondo to his backhand, he's bumped off against the boards. Near side corner, Biondo working for it, the defense. 
Forward to Smet, comes up top to the blue line. Folks, wrist shot on that one, steered wide. Stepping up with it, Sindelar. However, Slew comes out, enters into the DeSmet zone. It's knocked away by Dobish. Puck pinned up against the boards. Below the dots, puck is loose. Everyone lost sight of it for a second there. Smacked up against the boards, comes up top to the blue line, far side. At the dot, wrist shot on, that one blocked by Dobish. In the corner. DeSmet finally comes out with it. They exit the zone. Dunwald with it. Rebelli played up to the near side. Sindobri can't connect with it. Backhanded pass is DeSmet. Will go D to D in their own zone. That stretch pass, no icing. Little miscommunication. However, it's picked up by Peterson. Far side, cross ice pass, and Dobry with it. Inside the DeSmet zone, comes out, cross ice at the red line. Davenport able to get it in on Belly. Belly will play it for his defense, and Bruin to the far side. Turnover, DeSmet backhand, an opportunity, and stopped by Belly with the glove. 11 16 left to go here in the second frame, still a 1 0 lead for the Junior Billikins. That is an incredible save by Belly. Dismet on the turnover, they had the numbers advantage and they were moving the puck really well too. Credit to Belly for sticking with the puck the entire time and having the quick reflexes to snatch that puck out of the air. One by Dismet, wrist shot on. Good block by Barry. Coming out with it for the Junior Billikins is Loretta. He'll flip it in. Throwing it around the boards is Guevero. Near side, half wall, up top. Play to the far side, wrist shot on that one high of the cage. Stepping up, keeping the puck in. To the far side, corner. Junior Billiken still with it. Good play by Biondo. Oh, looking for the stretch pass and a good stick. By the junior Billikens, DiMaggio, but DeSmet in, shot on wide. That one rims around the boards the near side as Slu will exit the zone. They get it in deep, they'll change. The lone man left out on the ice is Uyghurs. DeSmet with it at their own blue line. Cross the ice, Schneiderman with it. At the red, he'll dump it in. In on the four check, going after the puck is Boshi. That one sent around and out of play as it skips off the glass and into the Zamboni area. With 10.08 left to go here in the second period, still a one nothing game for the Junior Billikens. And that in spite of only three shots on goal, similar to the first period, first couple minutes of the second period, even though they had the power play, Slew hasn't put anything on net. Face off coming to the glove hand side of Maxim Belli, up top of the blue line. Wrist shot on that one, doesn't get through. Sent around to the near side. Just above the hash marks, puck comes out of the zone inside the neutral zone. DeSmet picks it up. Lockman turns it over. Able to snag it for the Spartans is Worth. Worth down low, looking for that pass out front. Lockman. Lays a body, however the puck comes out of the zone. Cross corner dump in, that one goes off the glass. Knocked down in on the four check. Is Uyghurs, skating out with it. Into the neutral zone, able to get it in. Lockman, wrist one, or that, more like a, a slap shot as Schneiderman able to step up, keep the puck inside the zone. With it now is Bruin, Bruin. He finds Winkleman. That one, unable to get in on the second attempt, it does. Lyons able to throw it in as coming out of his net is Brady Guevara. Stretch pass off the skate, turned over, going the other way. Petlansky in, Petlansky shot on, doesn't make it through, rimmed around to the near side, stepping up is Bruin. Bruin, high slot, wrist one on, that one still loose as it's knocked away behind the net. I thought they beat Govro five hole once again for the second time this game. He got that one this time around though. 8.40 left to go here in the second period. Still a one nothing game 
14 shots for the DeSmet Spartans, five shots for the Junior Billikens of SLU. However, SLU does have a 1-0 lead, and they get an offensive zone opportunity after the icing by the Spartans. If you're DeSmet, you gotta just keep telling your team, hey, don't let up. Keep up the offense, keep doing things the way we are. One of them is gonna go through at some point. I don't think you're in panic mode yet just because none of your first 14 shots have gone in. With it, on the forehand, hips open, shot. That one off the side of the cage as the net comes dislodged. Tommy Ruder, the junior, 27 left to go here in the second period. We've seen a, the net come dislodged a few times throughout the night, especially in that early game, the Wickenheiser Cup between the Priory Ravens and the Lafayette Lancers. Andrew Marsh here along with my partner, Sean Malone. A great game thus far here at the Centene Community Ice Center. This met Biondo, slap shot on that one blocked. Biondo gets it back, he's hounded. Able to get it in deep. This met now going to work. Heffington pinned up against the boards. Helping him out is Sindelar. Far side half wall, squeaks loose, top of the slot. That one doesn't get through. Another opportunity goes off a stick and over the net. Biondo with it, top of the circle, wrist one on, that one. Looked like it might have been kicked away. It definitely did not make it all the way through towards Belly as we have a few pits inside the neutral zone. A couple of get to know you hits right there. A couple get to know, how are you doing, right? Inside of his own zone is DiMaggio. That pass feeds it to Sextro, comes out of the zone, able to get it in is Sindobri. Back for it is Folks. Folks on his forehand, he'll reverse it to the far side corner. Little miscommunication. Slew able to keep it in. Top of the circle, oh, Sindobri taken out. Puck is loose, it squeaks out of the zone. Slew with it. Waiting, waiting. Gundy flips it in. Sindobri has to tag up. Going back for it is Folks. That pass does not connect. We have an icing with 6.54 left to go here in the second period. We're seeing the physicality pick it up here in the last few minutes. Still a one goal game. Who's gonna come away with a physical battle here over the next couple of minutes? This is a tough stretch of hockey to get through right here because there is the extended break coming up. But other than that one minute break between the first and second period, it's a long stretch of hockey that these kids have been playing these past couple of minutes. The Smet able to take possession of the puck. Osdick with it, throws it off the far side boards. Arm is up. We have another icing with 6.44 left to go here in the second period. Slew still with five shots on net. One of those happened to go in in that first period. But from a shot standpoint, the Smet, they're getting all of the opportunities and coming up big is Maxim Belly. And credit to Slu, they've had good quality shots with those five shots. A lot of them have been really good shots on net, not just dump it and hope something happens. But the Smet, they've been playing, I don't wanna say the better game all in all because of the score, but They've given themselves more opportunities. I don't think you panic about that quite yet. Maybe midway through the third period, you start to think about it. But at this point, it's stick to the game plan. It's working, just hasn't come to fruition. Shot blocked by Dobish. Inside of his own zone, cross eyes pass. That one off the stick of Serafin. Serafin able to get it in, but not in deep. That puck flipped up into the air, gloved down. Skating out with it is Davenport. Davenport hits the blue line, wrist shot on. That might have glanced off the glove of Belly to the near side. Lockman throws it back down deep. Davenport working for it, helping him out, trying to drive the net as that one is poked away. Salthouse hounds the puck. Salthouse with it, forehand, wrist shot on. That one well wide. Able to pick it up is Ruder. Ruder, his one doesn't make it through. Backhanded attempt out of the zone, it's kept in. Slew with it, just inside their own zone. They'll take it back. Is able to play it back into his own zone as Benjamin Winkleman. Winkleman gets it back at the blue line. Sauce pass to the near side, one touch. Slew in. 
Lions, wrist shot, that one wide of the blocker, goes over the net. Able to keep it in is Petlansky. Behind the net, on the backhand. Schneiderman with it. Schneiderman looks up, forehand. That pass, he finds Salthaus. The Smet enters into the zone. No offside called. Ruder with it. Ruder. He finds Folks. Folks shot on. Rebound. It's loose. It's kicked. It's still in the blue paint. It's still loose. It goes into the near side corner. Snyderman with it for DeSmet. What a stop by Belly as Slew exits the zone. Lions at the blue line. To his backhand. Far side corner. Stops. Trying to feed it around to the near side behind the net. It's kept in at the blue line by DiMaggio. DiMaggio tries to shovel it forward. It's intercepted by the Spartans. Playing it to himself is Bashi. Bashi, he's pinned up in the corner. As he was thrown, thrown away as he's still getting bullied down in the corner. Comes up top to the blue line. That one smacked away. Able to throw it back into the zone is Osdick. That one got caught up in the netting behind the net. Here comes the, Vill the Junior Billikens. Vogley in, and that one stopped as driving the net and receiving some extracurriculars. Trying to see who that is for the Junior Billikens. I believe it was Colin Duffy. Let's oh, Maxwell Sextro ah. was the one driving the net. 3.55 remaining here in the first period. Still a 1-0 game. A very entertaining game to say the least. Terrific showing by the Junior Billikens netminder and Maxim Belly. And give credit to their defense as well throughout this game. They've blocked a number of shots against him too. But you go back to that one stretcher, there is the puck right in front of the net. Belly was laying down, and the defense for SLU wasn't able to allow Dismet to get the puck on their stick cleanly. They deserve a lot of credit for that play right there. Dobish unable to keep the puck in. Sindobri, he's working for it. Able to pick it up is Biondo. That pass off a stick. Still with it are the Spartans as Lockman. Goes in on the four check. That one to the far side. All goes off the skate, comes out of the zone. Biondo back for it. Biondo on his forehand, hits the blue line. Still with it. Biondo tries to push it past Luke Gundy. Sindobri flips it into the stands and a couple, <laughs> a couple fans not paying attention. It landed right in their lap. With 2.56 remaining here in the second period. 1-0 is the score. The Junior Billikens on top. And they look to stay on top and take home another Challenge Cup. It would be their third in four years. It's a lot of winning, Sean. That's certainly a lot. I mean, you look at the kids on this team that are seniors. You're going to win three times in your four years as a high school kid. That's something you're going to be bragging about for quite some time. 2.50 left to go here in the second period. Another puck has exited the ice and into the stands. This time, a Junior Bills fan has it. Free souvenirs for everyone. He's pretty excited about that. I hope they don't make him throw it back. The Smet wins the faceoff. Toe drag to the far side. Folks with it. He funnels one to the net. It's picked up by his teammate. Oh, right in front and whiffing on the shot was Nick Salthaus. Picked up by the Junior Billikens. In wrist shot. That one might have glanced off his stick because it went well to the right of the net and out of play with 2.30 left to go here in the second frame. Nick Salthaus found himself right in front and just whiffed on that shot. Possibly could have tied this game. Well, he would have had a golden opportunity. Govro would have had to try to go post to post, or excuse me, uh, Belly would have had to try to go post to post to make a save on that one. He's made a couple incredible saves throughout this game. If that puck was shot on net, that might have been the best of all if he could have stopped it. So to Smet with it behind the net. Far side, that one past the stick. Arm is up. 
icing has been called. 2.19 left here in the second period. The shots are in favor of the Smet. They have twice the amount as the Junior Billikens, 16 to eight. Junior Billikens with an offensive zone faceoff. DeSmet gets the best of them once again. Behind the net, Dobish with it. Zednik Dobish finds Lockman. Lockman up against two Junior Billikens. Unable to get anything going in the offensive zone. Schneiderman steps up but loses the puck. Able to help him out. This is his teammate in Tyler Davenport. Sent around the boards. Out of his net is Belly, leaves it for his defenseman. Near side, comes out of the zone. Dobish with it at the Blues logo at center ice, flips it in. Belly to Gundy. Gundy goes off the boards. This time it hits a, a, it hits a fan this time in the back. Well, it got him in the back. He was paying attention, but he saw the puck come over and he ducked and it just glanced off of his back. He's telling everyone in the rows behind him about it. It was a hit me right in, right in the back. 142 left here in the second period. So a couple whistles here late and a couple souvenirs as well here at the Centene Community Ice Center. As if this great game isn't enough. The Smet with it, trying to drive the net. Puck is loose. Biondo steps up. Unable to get anything towards the net, however, as it comes out of the zone. Ooh, Sindubri almost on to that puck as the Smet takes over inside the neutral zone. It hits off a stick, goes into the zone, going back for it is Kaplan. Comes up top to the blue line, kept in. Biondo at the dot, fires one on on the backhand. Comes to the near side, into the corner, behind the net, off the glass. Gundy able to get that out. Sindobri shows pressure, it's picked off. Here comes Vogley. Vogley makes a move, can't get around him though. Sindobri can't pick the puck up. Puck is still loose, shot on. Less than a minute left to go here in the second period. Near side corner. Both teams battling for the puck. Comes up top to the blue line. Bruin, shot, that one stopped. As getting the shot off was Winkleman with 37.1 seconds remaining here in the second period. Slu still with a one nothing lead. A close game here on this Friday night. Give credit to Brady Gobro. Uh, yes, he did allow the one goal to get through, but even beyond that one goal, a lot of the other shots against him have been really, really good opportunities for Slu High. Gobro, a huge reason why this deficit for Dismet is only one. Winkleman battling for it, helping him out. Serafin, he loses the puck. DiMaggio. Finds a man behind him, streaking in, shot on oh, that one, stopped by Belly. Belly just got enough of the glove on that one to deflect it wide of the net. Serafin off the skate of Uyghur, shot on up top to the blue line, skips under or maybe over the stick of DiMaggio. Less than 10 remaining, turned over to Smet with it. Poke forward, puck is loose and that will do it. We are through two periods of play and we have a one nothing game here at the Centene Community Ice Center. The Junior Billikens of SLU lead one to nothing over the DeSmet Spartans. Here in Maryland Heights, Missouri, the Challenge Cup is on the line. These two teams know one another quite well and they'll have one more period to duel it out to see who comes home with some hardware. Sean, what are your what are your thoughts of these two periods, Pete? Because there's there's been a lot to dissect here in this one. Give a lot of credit to SLU, because at the start of both periods, it looks like it was all dismet. But as the first period went on, as the second period went on, SLU got better and better, and that's when their opportunities would start coming. They were able to cash in in the first period. They weren't able to get anything to go in the second period, but they're still heading to the third up by a goal. Meanwhile, if you're DeSmet, it's got to be frustrating. Maxim Belli is playing out of his head in this game. The defensive line is playing pretty well for SLU as well. But you're going to be thinking about and you got to get past it, but it's going to be hard not to think about that opportunity right in front of the net and how you weren't able to put it home or even get a shot on goal to have a chance to put it home. 
you can't be thinking about that heading into the third period. Thinking about that won't do you any good. you got to focus on what you need to do right to finally find the back of the net against Belly and the Slough Junior Belicans. And they're getting their chances. We'll see if they can capitalize and find the equalizer in the third period. We will be back for the third period coming up shortly. The SLU Junior Billikens lead over the DeSmet Spartans one to nothing. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the Challenge Cup on the Mid-States Club Hockey YouTube page. Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Jack Harris. I'm a sophomore forward. I'm Jim Hunter, and I'm a freshman defense. And uh, let's go check out the doghouse. Let's go take a look at our uh, state of the art locker room. This is the coaches area along with our training room. the media room. Coaches do pre-game and post-game interviews in here and as well we do sometimes do team meetings in here. Learning in person or online. What works best for you? At Maryville, we let you decide. It's your education, your choice. Giving you what you really want. The power of options to create a personalized university experience as unique as you are. Go to class, participate in campus activities, take advantage of student support services, face to face or through a screen. We've merged the best of both worlds to give you a university experience that fits your life. Finally, the choice is yours. College has changed for good. Maryville UX, the future of higher learning. Every day we come from miles apart. We come from one bedroom apartments and two story homes. We drive, bike, and take the bus from more than 90 zip codes on both sides of the river. Our parents are executives, plumbers, university professors, and cab drivers. We represent diverse cultures, perspectives, and backgrounds. We are scholars, artists, athletes, and campus ministers. We represent St. Louis. We are many unique parts, yet one unified body. We share a drive to become prolific learners and critical thinkers of high moral caliber. We are brothers united in Christ, 
committed to justice and service. We promote solidarity and serve the common good. We are blessed with a 200-year tradition of excellence, inspired by St. Ignatius of Loyola. We are grateful for our past, but we are not looking back. Now is our time to take our school's torch and to light the future. It's our time to become master innovators, to create new opportunities. Now is our time to shine for the greater glory of God. It's our time to embrace impossible challenges, to push the boundaries of imagination. It's our time to expand our mindset and how we view the world. It's our time to make the mold, set the standard, and raise the bar. We are SLU. We are called to go forth into our third century, to go forth for our city, for our nation, and for the world. Now is the time to fan our flame and set the world on fire. For over 50 years, DeSmet Jesuit High School has inspired and prepared men for and with others to transform the world. If these walls could talk, they would share countless stories, friendships formed, laughter shared, dreams imagined. Our legacy is a promise to enable the success of those who follow in our footsteps. It is on the shoulders of many legendary leaders that we stand today to make this happen. We are the guardians of a tradition of excellence. What we give today shapes tomorrow. And so we accept the challenge. To give and not to count the cost. to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing that I do your will. We are so much more than just a high school. We are your home for four years. We are Spartans for life. We are Desmet.
college hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus. Determination. Strategy. And poise. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart. Skill. And passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. Hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. The American Collegiate Hockey Association. More than just a game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Challenge Cup here at the Centene Community Ice Center. It's the SLU Junior Billikens taking on the DeSmet Spartans, period number three, coming your way, 1-0 SLU leads. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner, Sean Malone. Sean, what are you expecting in this third period, this final 15 minutes in this last frame? I want to see the kind of hockey DeSmet comes out with early in the period for two reasons. Number one, we've seen SLU twice now get better as the period has gone on. They did it in the first when they found a goal, did in the second they had a couple opportunities to add to it, couldn't cash in. But for DeSmet, for two reasons I want to see them come out strong. Number one, that seems to be their best opportunity against SLU high. But for number two, once you get later in that period, that one goal can start to mess with you a little bit where it's okay, we have not found a goal yet. What are we going to do to find a goal that hasn't worked, so, nothing has worked so far? What else can we do? I don't think you want to get to that point. You want to try to get that goal early in the period. You go to overtime, you go to overtime, fine. But I don't think you want to wait till about halfway through the period and still not have that goal if you're dismet. Yeah, the more, the, I mean, the more pucks that Mascambelli has seen, the more he's stopped. He has been fantastic here in this game. It's a packed barn here at the Centene Community Ice Center. One heck of a venue for this Challenge Cup here on a Friday night. How about the Belly family? I mean, we talked pre or before during pregame about Andrew Belly. I mean, he's the one waiting in the wings right now. He's a freshman. His brother Maxim is a junior. He'll be back next year too, but man, that what are those guys doing at home to practice goaltending? One of them has to have a pretty good shot if they're gonna be practicing on each other. Lockman tripped up and a penalty coming. The Smet will head to the power play, but they need to be taken out of the play. We have an opportunity to set up an attack here with the extra skater on. Into the zone. On the backhand, that one touched, and we have a whistle. And a power play coming for the DeSmet Spartans. 14, 19 left to go here in the third period. DeSmet, a huge opportunity to find the equalizer. Well, you go back to the special teams. We talked about that before. Here's the difference. DeSmet converting 33% of the time on the power play. The Slew Junior Billikens, they are allowing a goal on 33% of penalty kills. We'll see if this is uh, one of those three times for either side where a goal finds the back of the net in the next two minutes. So Gundy grabs the puck after the faceoff, goes high and hard off the glass. Biondo with it. Biondo with speed at the blue line. Plays it forward for Reuter. Reuter in. Pinned up against the wall, near side. DeSmet looking to set things up. Biondo sauce pass far side. Lockman back to Biondo. They score! It was tipped. 13.52 left to go in the third period. And we have ourselves a 1-1 game. And this 
Listen to how loud this stadium is. It's only half of the Centene Community High Center making noise right now. It's the far side that this Met Spartans going absolutely nuts with their student section. What a rocket from the blue line. And I mentioned it was tipped, but I don't believe that came from a DeSmet stick because Biondo was the one that let it rip. He absolutely got everything into that one. Banked in with the friendly touch off the crossbar. And Maxim Belli, you know, with all the shots they put on him throughout the beginning of the game, it kind of feels like that scene in Rocky IV when Drago's cut. He's cut. He's cut. Kind of feels that way right now with this Met picking up some momentum behind them. I mean, am I blind? <laughs> or did that just go bar down? I, did it go I, bar down? It might have gone bar down. <laughs> I don't know. It happened so quick. It was just bink, boom, in the back of the net. I thought it might have been redirected, but possibly not. Maybe we need to get a replay on that if we can ask our producer, Eric Skelton. But either way, 1-1. We have ourselves a game, and like you said, an early goal. That's what DeSmet needed as they skate in. Ruder with it forward. Now they don't have to worry about playing for the tie. They can play their regular brand of hockey throughout the rest of this period as this one is dumped out of play. They can play their regular brand of hockey and not feel that pressure of, okay, nothing's worked so far through three and a half periods. Now what are we going to do? Now they, and you look at the shots on goal, the advantage still in their favor. Now all they need is one more to get through, and then it'll be slew on the other end where, okay, we've only got 10 shots on goal. We're about three minutes, or two minutes rather, into the third period. Now we're in trouble. So to Smet with an offensive zone face off. And now slew has numbers going the other way. Three on two for the Junior Billikens. In the slot, they score! Maxwell Sextro to the student section. And just like that, the Junior Billikens respond with 13.06 left to go here in the third period. Junior Billikens on top by one. Talk about a counter punch from the SLU Junior Billikens. We talked about how Desmet kind of had all the momentum on their side. Then the SLU, all it takes is one goal from Maxwell Sextro, and now that far side of the rink is quiet, and it's here on the side we're sitting on that is making a ton of noise. And if you're just met, that's got to let all the air out of the blue. And I had just talked before, now you don't have to worry about tying up the game. You can play your brand of hockey. You are right back in the same seat you were not long ago, not even 50 seconds after you score the game-tying goal. So what a response by the Junior Billikens. Back for it is Dobish at his own blue line. Backhanded sauce, finds Lockman. Lockman plays it forward for Biondo. He's taken out of the play. Still fighting for the puck behind the net on his forehand. Looks up, tries to feed one. It is loose, low slot, battling for it, whacking at it. Puck is smothered. And we have some extracurriculars after the whistle with 12.38 left here in the third period. A big stop by Maxim Belli. But oh my goodness, what a response by the Junior Billikens to make it a 2-1 game after DeSmet capitalized on the power play. Just a howitzer from the blue line. That got the entire far side of this ice rink fired up. But like you said, less than a minute later, the Junior Billikens respond and everyone around us erupted. I mean, we gotta check that puck, make sure it's all still completely intact with the slap shot from Biondo that ringed in off the crossbar, shortly followed up by Sextro's go-ahead goal. That one a rocket by its own right. I mean, are we playing with a full puck out there or is there <laughs> shrapnel that's sitting in one of these goals somewhere? At the red line, flipping it out of play is Grant Fultz. The sophomore, 12-18 left to go here in the third period. A lot of these players play with each other. We mentioned that in the first game, the Wickenheiser Cup between Priory and Lafayette. A lot of these players outside of high school hockey 
they have a ton of chemistry with one another. Yeah, AA, uh, AAA teams and other travel organizations, there's a lot of familiarity between these two squads. So a stretch pass, Junior Billikens in. Taken down, looking for a call are the Junior Billikens. They won't get one as Logan Petlansky was taken to the ice. Far side, Lockman with it. Lockman makes a move. Lockman trying to drag it and take it to the middle of the ice. He can't. It's picked up by DiMaggio who plays it forward. That one sent in, cross corner dump in. Back for it, Biondo. Biondo with it. Biondo skates up ice. Hits the red line, able to chip it in forward, goes after his own puck. Tries to tie the puck up against the boards. It's gloved down by Lockman, comes up, top to the blue line, wrist shot on, that one wide, near side half wall. Heffington battling for the puck for DeSmet as it rims around to the far side. Junior Billikins, here's Sextro, Sextro, that pass skips under a stick. It's kept in. DeSmet able to get it out just inside the neutral zone. He'll skip over the stick of Heffington. Biondo picks it up. Sauce pass to Heffington at the red line. He's able to knock it forward, but it's coming back the other way. In on the puck. Spinner. He'll let the spin away. Sextro able to get the puck down below the dots. He's hounding it, pokes at it. Near side corner, Slew comes out with it. Loretta fires it around to the other side. Bumped off the puck, able to keep it in is Barry, but that one squeaks out, hops over the red line, and sent in by DeSmet. Line change coming for the Spartans, back to get it. Able to make that breakout pass is Wagner, comes to the near side, getting it in for the junior Billikens is Barry, out of his net. Govero setting up shot behind the cage is Zednik Dobish. Skates up ice, that one off the stick, able to get it in are the Spartans, Nick Salthouse. However, comes out of the zone, no icing. Govero out of his net, picking it up for the Spartans is Tommy Reuter. Reuter in, Reuter forehand, still with it. Out front, and that one goes wide. Salthouse battling down low on his forehand, still with it, using his big body. Biondo, slap one on, that one blocked. Comes out of the zone. Gundy, oh, that's DiMaggio. Gets it back, wrist shot on, that one stopped, and a whistle blown with 9.09 left to go here in the third period. Two to one, Junior Billiken still in the lead. And that's only the second shot of the period for the SLU Junior Billikens. Again, like the first two, the, the opportunities have been few and far between in the early parts of the period, but man, a SLU made the most of them. And that goal in the first period finally coming in at the five minute mark. The second goal of the game, the one that gave them the lead once again. It comes just 50, not even 50 seconds after the game tying goal. Faceoff coming to the left of Brady Govero. Won by the Junior Billikens. However, DeSmet hounding the puck. Biondo steps up on his backhand. Able to get it in, but not too deep. Stays with it. Gloved down by Bashi. That one out front, but goes wide. 8.50 left here in the third period. Puck tied up against the boards in the near side corner. Waiting for it is Heffington. Right at the dot, puck is still not loose in the corner. Jabbing at the puck is Jacob Bashi. Finally squeaks loose, that one out front, knocked away, puck is loose, right in the blue paint, and a glove has been put over the puck. Puck is smothered, whistle blown, 8.24 remaining here in the third period, a 2-1 game, slew. Junior Billikens still on top. And Dismet has had some opportunities. You look at that scrum right in front of the net a few, a few seconds ago where the puck just went wide. Dismet's had opportunities. It's going to be frustrating if it continues to go this way because 
Like I said before, you're going to be sitting there thinking, man, we've thrown everything in the kitchen sink at Maxim Belly and the Slew Junior Billikens. Oh, what huge hit inside the neutral zone. The Junior Billikens looking for a goal and a call. That shot, oh, a spin, a spinning attempt. Goldboro had no idea where the puck was. I think he was and that twig for, is lost. I think he was waiting for a penalty as he took a hit there. He was waiting for goaltender interference. I mean, there are just calls left and right happening on both sides of the ice for both teams, and nothing was called from the referees. Dobish with it. And to be fair to the refs, they've been letting them play all game they long. Have. It's been very egregious when a penalty has been called. And there, you could, one could argue a few of those were pretty egregious. And I'm talking for oh, both yes. teams. A trip, an elbow. Not that there were things that, or there was nothing that could be called, but it's not like they've been calling ticky-tack things throughout the game, and now they're finally letting them play. They've been letting them play all game long. Up top of the blue line, sent back down by DiMaggio. To Biondo with it, cross-ice pass. Finds his man. Salthouse in, that one off the shin pad as he was looking for his man wide slew with it junior billikins in winkleman still with the puck trying to find his man in henry seraphit down low for uyghurs uyghurs has winkleman helping him out that one goes right by conti conti at his own blue line feeds his man skating with it now and a high stick called We get a whistle, 6.34 left to go here in the third period. And someone's heading to the sin bin. Come on, Shane, let's go. Oh, no, they're not. No, it's just going to be a high oh, stick on the puck, so they're going to set up the face <laughs> off on the opposite end of the ice. I was going to say. It, it, I love your Billikens where nobody touched the puck. Because if we touch it, we can get hit. But if they touch it, we get a face off on the opposite end. Right. Plus, you're up by a goal in the third period. A couple extra seconds tick off, good. That benefits you as well. I don't know why I thought there was a penalty coming. There really haven't been any. As there's a shot right off the face off. Into the corner near side. DeSmet comes out with it. Heffington with it at the red line, able to get it in out of his net. Belly on his backhand, throws it around to the near side boards. 6.15 left to Smet. Trying to funnel pucks to the net. That was Jacob Bashi. It comes out of the zone. Folks with it. He'll play it back for Biondo. Biondo on his forehand. Finds his man. And Sindelar. Lockman with it. Kept in. Worth. As falling into the net was Dunwald. That one skips over the stick of Folks. Able to help him out as Worth. Nathan Worth with it. Finds Dunwald off the stick. Gets into the zone of the Junior Billikens. Playing it around the boards. Was the netminder. in Maxim Belly. Dobish in. Dobish makes a move. Wrist shot on that one stop. We approach the five minute mark left to go here in the third period. Icing has been called. Still a 2-1 game here at the Centene Community Ice Center. And the Challenge Cup is on the line. Maxim Belli, not only has he made some great saves throughout this game, but he's made some of them look absolutely way too easy considering the shot that he faced. Like that one that he blockered aside there, that was a way quicker shot than I thought it was coming out. And he was ready for it and just kind of punched it away like it was no one's business. So setting up shop and skating up ice is DiMaggio, DiMaggio at the blue line, hits the red line, floats it in. In on the four check, racing after the puck is Vogley, it's sent around the near side at the blue line, able to keep it in is DiMaggio. Once again, Govero throws it around the near side, Schneiderman elected to not attempt to get that out, that one's blocked, the Smet. Oh, just past the stick of Tyson Davenport. 4.41 left to go here in the third period. Still 2-1. If you're at this point for DeSmet, 
This is when you're going to be looking up at that clock and like, we got four minutes and 41 seconds to get a goal. The only time we got a goal on this guy is when we were up on the power play. Going to be frustrating, but this Met has to find a way to get one to squeak through. They've had opportunities, but on five-on-five -five hockey, they have been unable to cash in. Biondo with it, off the boards. Forward for Reuter, that one turned over at the red line. Slew going the other way, here they come. Winkleman in, Winkleman to this backhand. Oh, that one goes right over the net. As he was looking for Serafin. Kept in by the junior Billikens at the blue line. Loved down by Serafin, throws it in deep. It rims around to the near side corner. On his backhand, shoveling at it is Grant Folks. Comes out of the zone at the blue line. Gundy with it. Gundy at the Blues logo. Gets it in deep. Goes after his own puck. Govero out of his net. He'll leave it. Plays it for his man. DeSmet in, trying to drag and make a move and go around the defender was Tommy Reuter, 3.45 left to go here in the third period, 2-1, Slew on top. Give credit to the defense there, not allowing him to get around, playing the body all the way through. Don't worry about the puck, if you poke the puck away, great, but he's not gonna be able to make a play on the puck if you don't let him get back to the puck after he tries to make that move. Puck tied up, right at the faceoff dot, it squeaks loose. Junior Billikens with it. Cutting across, shot on by Nicholas Lyons. The Smet going the other way. Lockman with speed on his forehand. For Heffington at the blue line. Schneiderman could not get that to the net. Petlansky in. Petlansky shot on as both Petlanskys on this line. Lockman to his forehand. He's taken down. DeSmet, I'm sure, <laughs> wanting to call. They're not going to get it. How about Belly's athleticism? He just leapt right over him in full goaltender gear. Less than three left to go here in this one. Skating up ice, Reuter. He loses it. Turned over. Vogley, forehand. Looking out front. Oh, right off the tape. And goes just wide of the post. Here's Conti with it. Conti to his backhand. That one sticked away by Sindobri. That one sent out of the zone. Arm is up. Icing has been called. 225 remaining here in the third period. It's a one goal game. DeSmet leads in the shot category. However, in goals, it's all slew. Timeout has been called. I think it's the appropriate time for a timeout if you're dismet. And the conversation goes back to the one we had last game with Lafayette and Priority. If you're dismet, following the icing, you got the face off on the other end of the ice. Are you pulling the goaltender already? Right now, right. no. All right. How I'm close not. are you, though? If you win the face off on that end, are you yanking him? I think there's just a little bit too much time. 225 remaining here in the third period. I think once you get under that two minute mark, you have to have sustained pressure. If you get sustained pressure and you can continue that pressure for a good solid 20 to 30, I think then that's when you, you get him off the ice because, you know, I just feel like there's a little bit too much time. I think if you can get a clean possession, I would do it. Not where you know, you're fighting for it or you dump it into the corner to go pick it up. I think that if you can get the puck on your stick and there's not a Billiken or a junior Billiken around you, then I think I would pull the goaltender. But otherwise, unless it's a clean draw, I I'm probably keeping Brady Gobro in net, like you said, for another 20, 30 seconds longer. You got to imagine that Vito Biondo the third will be out on the ice because Boy, does he have a wicked shot. We saw him capitalize on the power play. And that made it a one-to-one -one game. We'll see what happens. There is 225 remaining in this one. Hardware on the line here in St. Louis. Lockman at the blue line, able to keep it in. Battling for the puck. Salthouse smacks it down low, comes out front, up top. Lockman with it. Lockman. 
Little miscommunication as he dropped it for Reuter. Down low, near side corner, rimmed around the boards, but that will go down the length of the ice. And we have an icing with 2.02 left to go in this one. You're Brady Govro. It's got to be tough sitting on the bench right now. You know deep down you've played a really nice game. You've only faced 16 shots, but you made some impressive saves throughout this game. You're the reason why your team is within a goal. So you were right, Sean. They elected to pull the goalie early. What do I know? <laughs> it's clearly all, it's clearly nothing. It's subjective. I'm of the mindset of, well, you're not going to you know, win with the goaltender sitting in there. Right. You're already down. What's the difference being down one versus down two at this point? If you win clean on that end, you might as well pull him. Up top to the blue line. Ruder. Biondo to Lockman. Shot on. Oh, what a block. What a block by DiMaggio. That one comes into the neutral zone. Sent back in by Lockman. Dismet after it. DiMaggio flips it. Glove down at the blue line. Kept in. Ruder. Dobish. Backhanded opportunity goes wide. That one sent out of the zone. And he, no icing. The linesman says no icing. Wow. Below the goal line. Well, that's huge because there's an opportunity right oh, there. Oh, my goodness. The junior Billikens almost just put the nail in the coffin. I think everyone on both sides kind of expected icing for Biondo in shot. That one out of play. 102 left to go here in the third period. What, what just happened? I think everybody kind of thought it was going to be icing because we <laughs> saw the players on the ice slowing up at first. And then icing was waved off. And all of a sudden, the players are like, oh, my God, okay, there's a puck to play. The Slu Junior Billikens had it behind the net. All they had to they do. They had it right in the blue paint, yeah. Sean. All they had to do was get the puck on the stick to try to put it on net after they got it from behind the net, and they couldn't do it. We have a minute two left to go here in the third period. Andrew Marsh alongside Sean Malone. It's been quite the game. Ruder in, shot, rebound. Is it in? It's loose. Oh, it's a dog pile on dog top of it pile. Is, no Where's goal. the puck? It was sitting in the blue paint right in the crease. No goal. And now some players need to be separated. And you're on Nick either Salthouse. side. The last thing you want to do is go on a penalty for the final 53.7 seconds left of regulation. If you're slew, you don't want to put this met up by two skaters. If you're dismet, you don't want to have five on five with the goalie poles. If that puck would have went in, this place erupts. Offensive zone face off, six attackers for Dismet. 2-1, Slew leads. The Junior Billikens win the face off, rimmed around the boards, kept in by Lockman. Biondo helping him out, that one squeaks out of the zone. Sextro on it. Sextro kicks at it. Picking it up and putting it into the back of the net is Benjamin Winkleman with 38.3 seconds remaining. That'll all but do it. A two goal lead with less than a minute to go. And the Junior Billikens can feel it. A challenge cup. Yeah. Their third in four years. Sextro pointing to his ring finger as he goes back to the bench to lead the team and now turns to face the student section and do the same. He wants everyone to know he just got his team their third ring in four years. A senior himself, he's gonna be excited about that. How many, I'm curious now at this point, he was pointing to his ring finger, but is the ring finger already taken on that hand? He's won two before, which fingers are still available? <laughs> That one sent into the Dismet zone. 30 seconds remaining. They skate up ice, Tab Tyson Davenport. Davenport weaves his way through a few bodies. Forehand shot attempt, that one goes off a body behind the cage. Far side corner, Dunwald tied up, kept in by Lockman. Lockman shot on that one. Off the body of DiMaggio. Slew exits the zone, slap shot on, it's wide. That'll do it for this one. Slew, Junior Billikens on top once again. Challenge Cup champions in 2022.
absolutely incredible game. We saw great goaltending from both sides. We saw a lot of physical play from either team as well. But the difference in this one, Sextro with that third period haymaker answer following the Dismet game tying goal. And he was fighting along those far side boards that created that opportunity for Winkleman to cash in and put this game away with the nail in the coffin. That third goal with 38 seconds left to go in the period. Slew Billikens, they played out of their mind. Maxim Belly played an unbelievable game for Slew High. They deserve this championship. They deserve to win the cup challenge with a game like that. Inches. This is a game of inches, Sean, and that puck was sitting right inside the crease. Less than a minute to go. DeSmet was inches away from tying this game and potentially sending it to overtime. However, a huge stop, a giant dog pile. Maxim Belly, you mentioned him, he played terrific. And he was beat one time in tonight's game. And you gotta look at, on the other side, Brady Gavurro. He played fantastic he, as well. He, he was did. great tonight. Oh, there weren't a ton of shots thrown his way. Only 17 total shots. That's including one of the ones that was after the game, or after he was already pulled. But was it me or did it feel like every single shot he faced was a quality scoring it opportunity? It really was. It really was. It wasn't was. a lot of those, all right, we'll throw it on the goaltender, keep it pad high, see if we can get a rebounder, just throw it at his chest. They were all really good opportunities from Slew High. They weren't just throwing flurries of shots on goal. They were calculated shots from Slew High School. And Brady Govro, like I said before, he's the only reason this game was close. What a finish here at the Centene Community Ice Center. A packed crowd on a Friday night. State champions. An unbelievable game between these two teams. A ton of history between these two teams. A ton of history between these two schools. How and about that the, rivalry continued here on the ice tonight. And again, how about the history from the SLU Junior Billikens, their senior class, knowing that they get to walk off not just th champions three times, or actually not three times in four years, 2021 was off, but still two out of four years and you're able to recapture the trophy as well. It was three in a row for SLU just a couple of years ago. They get it back and potentially hand it off to the next class that can potentially start a new streak now for the SLU High Billikens. And you mentioned it before the game started, head coach for DeSmet, Chris Durso. He said it'd be tough trying to put the puck in the back of the net against this Junior Billikens squad. And tonight that proved to be the exact same thing that he talked about. That is exactly what happened. It was, it was tough to get past Maxim Belly and you gotta wonder, maybe he is our player of the game. I, I would put him, it. I would I would vote for him I, if I had a vote. I would vote for him as well. <laughs> it's really, it feels like a two horse race. Maxwell Sextro, who had the assist on the game clinching goal, and he also had the go ahead goal. Yeah, the game winning well. goal. Yeah. yeah. The GWG. So that's it. It's a two horse race, and it really comes down to, and they both played fantastic. Both are deserving, but it kind of just at this point will come down to which performance did you prefer? The outstanding goaltending of Maxim Belli or the clutch play of Maxwell Sextro through the third period especially. I think personally I'm with you. I would go with Maxim Belli. He played phenomenal <laughs> in this game. I think he deserves it. Either way, uh, you know, you gotta give credit to all these players tonight, especially the ones wearing white. They're singing to their fans right now, but uh, just an incredible effort out of DeSmet. They dominated, I mean, they dominated that first period. Yeah, just in the beginning of the second period as well, and even the beginning of the third period. This met just about over a minute in. They got the power play. They converted it about 20 seconds later into a goal, and you're thinking, okay, this met. They're on fire right now. They've got, they just tied this game up. Now they don't have to worry about getting into panic mode if they're down by a goal late in the period. But give credit to Slew High in the first period, in the second period, 
And then finally in the third period, they got better and better as each period got on. They took the punches early from Desmet, but they came with the heavy swings late in each period and walked away victorious. An incredible game tonight as you see the Junior Billikens celebrating. And now we will have the trophy presentation. Of course, just a beautiful piece of hardware that has been given to so many great players out of this area. A ton of great teams that have come through the St. Louis area. A ton of great players that have donned both of these jerseys. And overall, it's, it's just been a terrific night of hockey, Sean. You, you look at the first game, the Wickenheiser Cup, it was basically almost the exact same outcome minus the, you know, an empty net goal. Very close games and that we we thought maybe we'd get some high scoring games. Uh, maybe that's was that was just us wishing because we'd like to see <laughs> some goals go in the back of the net. But, you know, as a, as a hockey fan, you watch these games and you love the, the tight the tight games, they come down to the wire, and this is exactly what you would want if you're a hockey fan in the city of St. Louis, in the state of Missouri, the heartland of hockey, and in a place where hockey is growing. It's games like this that that get the younger generation of fans excited. Well, I mean, you saw how many kids came out to this game, and I'm not just talking the high school kids. I mean, like, kids' kids that were sitting there watching this and Let's face it, not everyone can get a chance to go to a St. Louis Blues game, especially with the way things have been going with COVID the last year and fans not being allowed for an extended period of time last season. Yeah, it's been a little bit harder to get to some of those games. This is an opportunity to go to a game and see some hockey that maybe gets the next generation excited about it, like you said. And, you know, a kid comes to this game, then he wants to sign up for youth hockey next year. So it's a, it's a fun way to grow the sport. When you got a game on hand as exciting like this, you understand why it's certainly growing. You can't not love hockey after watching a game like this. Two very talented teams laying it all out there on the ice. One of them, the SLU Junior High Billikens coming away, with, or the SLU High Junior Billikens rather, coming away with the victory. Yeah, that's uh, Maxwell Sextro down there accepting some hardware. So, you know what, he deserves it. He played a terrific game. He has the old game-winning goal, my favorite stat, the GWG. Like I said, he had the impressive play along those far side boards where there is that fight for the puck. It was him and it was a Dismet Spartan. He came away with it and was able to corral it to Winkleman, who was able to find the back of the net and put Desmet away. Otherwise, Desmet had a few opportunities earlier in that they, possession. They, they you extend did. that a little longer, who knows what happens. Their only other goal came when they were up a skater. That one was on the power play. Maybe if they had more time without that extra uh, empty net goal, maybe they do get the equalizer. We'll never know. Because in this reality, the SLU High Junior Billikens, they are the Challenge Cup champs for 2022. State champions, this team, this program has done a terrific job at making a name for themselves over the course of the past five years the past four years they've won three a terrific showing by the SLU junior billikens well that'll do it from here at the centene community ice center a terrific game tonight between the SLU junior billikens and the desmet spartans we want to thank everyone for tuning in to tonight's game a terrific game a 3-1 game and that'll bring us to a conclusion on this season of high school hockey in this area, a terrific area of hockey, the St. Louis, Missouri. For myself, Andrew Marsh, for my partner, Sean Malone, and for our producer, Eric Skelton, we thank everyone for tuning in to this edition of high school hockey, Mid-States, Club Hockey, the Challenge Cup on the Mid-States Club Hockey YouTube page.